can see, I've done a lot of work on this actually already. Not too much, you know, I've gotten it bent and gotten in the rough shape, cut out the rough shape of it. But there's a lot of fine tuning that needs to be done, so I got the grinder. I know you could argue, oh, just use a jigsaw or a scroll saw or something, granted, but I personally don't like using those because for me, the lines just get too wavy and it's, for me, it's, I don't like to, I just don't like it. So I prefer to use a grinder. It takes a little bit longer, but you know what? I'm the one doing it, so who's going to complain, right? Anyway, um, let's get to it. Safety first. long but uh, we we got this side down to pretty much where it needs to be there's I left a little tiny bit of room maybe about an eighth of an inch or so of room off of the line and that's fine and if there's you know a slight variation with the um, with the width of it on either side as long as it's very small like within a quarter of an inch you're really not going to notice it um, plus my template that I had made that I originally drew this with wasn't perfectly round either so I had to make some adjustments as I actually ground into this that's also why I wanted to grind it instead of just cutting it because I knew there were some perfections in there and I wanted to be able to control how fast I got to the line so uh, I think this is looking really good so far uh, like I said got that one side all nice and rounded out now and now it's on to the other side but first I need to get some water. Always stay hydrated. All right, boys and girls, we are back. That was a long water break. Uh, I actually had to get the uh, cord for my camera because it was dying, so fun. All right, like I said, uh, we're gonna get now, get working on this other side here. You see it's all kind of, not shield shaped. So we're gonna grind that out right now. Let's go. Now, as you saw, I was measuring just to make sure I wasn't, you know, cutting too deep into it or anything. Because I was thinking, you know, this is looking pretty symmetrical. But I'm like, ah, I'm not quite to the line because I've had experience where it's 
you know, it looks right, but then you go measure it or something, and you really should have gone to the line, you know, or, or near so. It's like, all right, you know, go to the line. But literally just now I stopped and I was like, this is looking really symmetrical. So I thought, oh, I'll just measure real quick. And see, I thought, probably not. But it turns out this is actually symmetrical now. Like, it's the same size both ways. So I'm going to stop uh, grinding on it, which, which is a good thing. Which means um, I'm done grinding on it. The main bulk of the shield is done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand off all the lines, except for my middle line here, that's probably going to be useful in the future, uh, but I'm just going to sand the surface down, not to anything like smooth or anything, but just to get the, the pencil marks off and everything. So uh, let's get to it. Shield. I mean, heck, I think this thing, this thing is probably as thick as, just about as thick as a real shield would have been back then. Maybe a little thinner, but it'll definitely, it'll definitely hold up against some blows. That's for, that's for sure. But I uh, got a nice curve to it. Look at that. It's beautiful. But um, I think this turned out really well, really nice, and it's a good size. That's gonna be, that's gonna be great. I like it a lot. Uh, I think the next thing to do now is to figure out how I'm going to put the detailing on the front because there's a lot of detailing. So that's going to be the next step of, in figuring that out um, and in, in just thinking about it right now in my head it's going to be it's going to be a bit of a booger to get that done because I'm not sure if I want to actually put something onto onto the shield like actually have the cut out of the lion and put it onto the shield or if I want to emboss the shield with that pattern. Uh, either way it's going to have its share of advantages and disadvantages. Uh, I think it's just going to be down to the one that is going to be most paint friendly. What I mean by paint friendly is which one's going to be easier to paint because there's all going to be all these different colors that I need to put on the shield. So, yeah, that's going to be fun. So let's get to it. Well, guys, it turns out we're not going to get to the emblem on this episode, but we will get to that on the next episode. Uh, but before we end this episode, I would like to let you guys know on how I curved the shield. Uh, so, because that's an important thing for a shield. Uh, when I was a kid, you know, I'd just make shields, you know, any flat old board did, and I didn't care about it, it was a shield. Um, but now that I'm older and I have a little bit more of an eye for detail, I like to have a little more accurate to what real shields were. Now, the method that I used, uh, I just got an old sheet of plywood and a couple of two by fours and screwed it onto the ends. I don't remember exactly the exact measurements, but I'm gonna estimate right now. It was about four feet by two feet wide, the, the sheet of plywood. So nothing too crazy, or but not yet yeah, nothing too small. So nothing too crazy, either big or small. And then uh, just a couple of two by fours, like I said, screwed onto the very ends of it uh, with the four four inch measurement flat. So it's only two inches high, not four inches high. So uh, and then you put. Then I got two sheets of quarter inch plywood. So you see how thick this is? This is half inch. Well, I glued two sheets of quarter inch plywood because good luck bending a half inch sheet of plywood. Like seriously, good luck. It can be done, but really wouldn't want to deal with that. So I got two sheets of quarter inch plywood and I set them 
onto those 2x4s because they're sticking up a little bit. Well, you put weight in the middle of this and it creates a depression. Now I would recommend getting like a 2x4 to set in the center of the boards so that way you know, that way you can put your weights on the 2x4, that way and it's distributed throughout the entire shield instead of just on a central point or anything like that. So I would recommend getting a 2x4, putting your weights on the 2x4, so that way it's distributed throughout. Uh, but then you spread a whole bunch of glue on one sheet of plywood, slap the other bad boy on there, put your weights on it, let it cure for like two days. I know glue usually dries within 24 hours, but with something like this, when it's under the pressure like that, I would give it at least two days to dry. I'm impatient, I don't like waiting two days, but I did. Uh, so, and the reason why I didn't film that is because at the time of building, I wasn't planning on making a build video out of it, but uh, now I am, I guess. Um, so, that's why, but I thought I'd share that with you guys. You can literally look up any other shield tutorial and they'll tell you pretty much the same thing or use some other method. I know of another method that if you do want to get the curvature of your shield a bit tighter and something we may do later if I end up doing any more shields, um, if you want to get it tighter is what you might be able to do with big old like six inch uh, wide PVC pipes at like the hardware store. What you can do is that you can lay that onto the center here so that way you have a round base to base your curve off of. And then what you do is you get uh, doggone uh, toe straps or uh, uh, tie downs and you ratchet that sucker up and you can adjust the curvature of how much you uh, want your shield to curve. So if you want a tighter curve than this, that's probably the method for you to use. You can also stack up the 2x4s on the sides as well. You can do that as well. So there's really, there's multiple, multiple ways to skin a cat or to bend the shield in this case. So. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you on the next episode of Narnia Lore.